episode 71. He would travel on business a lot and he would make me burritos and he would freeze them and put them in the freezer. So when he was gone for like three or four days, that's what I would live off of. So I had my Mexican food in my blood from when I was, I was young. Hey everybody, this is the Just Forking Around podcast where every week we raise our glass and toast to the beautifully insane, sexy world of food adventures. Expect a variety pack of guests every week. All have the most compelling stories. They are the brewers, the distillers, the authors, winemakers, farmers, vegan product makers, restaurateurs, top chefs, entrepreneurs. I mean, truly inspirational, motivational. This is ear ball riveting. So settle in and let's fork around. Forking around reminds me of my social media platforms that I would love to share with you. (laughs) At Forking Podcast, that is Instagram. So at Forking Podcast, website, justforkingaround.net. And Facebook is my personal page, Debbie.Salzberg. And if you're on the iTunes, enjoying the podcast, I would love, if you enjoyed the show, to subscribe, rate, and review. Much love. And now let's really get into this next episode. Tacos and tequila. That is what you will be craving after listening to this episode with Joe Kahn, founder of Condado Tacos. Condado, C-O-N-D-A-D-O, tacos.com. Yeah, you're going to crave those tacos. They're mostly in Columbus, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati area. So if you're in that area, you probably are very familiar with Condado Tacos. And if you are not in that area, you still will crave probably tacos and tequila and margaritas, of course. Uh, But you will find amazing intel and a great story in this episode. Uh, We talk a lot about scaling a business and coming up with a concept. And Joe's he's such a cool guy. And the way that they create culture and maintain a certain style and how to do that. It's it's something people don't really think about as a guest. If you've never worked in a restaurant, kind of walking in the vibe, the vibe of a restaurant, the culture of a restaurant. We define that. We go through that a little bit and branding it and what his philosophy is. And obviously it's working because he's, <laughs> he's quite successful. He's at about six restaurants right now. So let's see. I'm going to tell you my preamble for the day. You know, I love to, to give a little pre when I do an introduction of what I'm up to. <laughs> I'm sitting on the boat. Shocker. <laughs> Marina Del Rey. It's a beautiful day. It's a little bit after the July 4th holiday that we had here in the States last week. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed yours. I went to Lake Havasu, Arizona, a high of 818 degrees, a low of 116 degrees. (laughs) It was really warm, but we had a blast. I went to visit my friend's family. We did partake in some casino gambling because it there is a casino there on the around on the other side of the lake. <laughs> we uh, participated in jet skiing, some water sports, which was amazing, and uh, no injuries. Last year we had a little injury with somebody's lip, but this one was was clean. It's clear, no issues. So that was, I'm going to knock on wood. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> and now we're back here, and I am really excited to share this episode with you all. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode with Joe Kong. Okay, so well, thank you so much, Joe, for joining today. And as we start off every podcast episode with a toast, I normally have some type of boozy drink, but this morning it is only 9 a.m., I went with coffee and water. I know I'm such a oh, very nice. But I I hope you have something fancy over there. 
<laughs> oh yeah, we're uh, we're drinking tequila over here. Oh right. Oh, yeah, it's, yes. It's noon. We're... It's noon. It's noon oh three. Oh yeah, so it's noon. Right. <laughs> so I'm gonna raise my my Starbucks and water glass cup to you, and I hope that you have something that you can maybe Absolutely. explain and then do the toast. Sure. Explain what I'm drinking. Yeah. What do you have in your cup? <laughs> mm. <clears throat> what do I have? Uh, straight tequila. Yes. Yes. Uh, Don Julio and Yeho. Oh, yeah. That's amazing. Mm, very yeah. good. Uh, sipping, sipping tequila. That is sipping tequila. So I'm going to raise my, my mug to you and you have your glass. So let's do it. What's the toast, Joe? Cheers to uh, Pindado Taco Touchers. That's what we call our team, Taco Touchers. So cheers to Condado Taco Touchers. All right. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. I love that. Condado Taco Touchers. Cheers. That's right. Chin -chin. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So Condado Tacos, Joe, tell us, I mean, I know when you started in Columbus in 2014, but, and you opened your doors and now you've have opened up many other places and tons of accolades. I, I'm so proud of you and impressed. I mean, that's like in just a few years. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, tell us, I mean, I know that it doesn't, in 2014, that concept, you didn't just open your doors. What was it like to come up with the concept? I mean, were you just like <laughs> sipping on some Anejo and thinking, I want to open up a taco place or? Well, it's just <laughs> funny you ask, but um, actually it was done over whiskey. It was probably a half a bottle of whiskey. And uh, me and my wife came up with this concept in literally 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. And it's so funny because I've been a restaurant guy for 30 plus years and I've failed many restaurants opened a lot for other people and failed, did one of my own concepts and failed. And you just never know what people want and what they'll be receptive to. I just took a big gamble and uh, literally in 45 minutes, we came up with it. And to this day, it's about 90% accurate what's on paper. Wow. It's really funny. That's amazing. Yeah. I kind of got chills a little bit because when you say bring up like failure, it's almost like it was more like I got perseverance from from that clip mm -hmm. that you just said, because that means that you just kind of don't give up. And then something birthed out of all that that came out in 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's it really is a crazy thing. But yeah, I, I think obviously the restaurant business is is very tough and you never know what's going to uh, take off or, or fail. But uh, yeah, this one people um, really bought into. They love it. So tell us a little bit. If I walk, if I walk into let's say your flagship, the first one in Columbus, what, mm -hmm. let's paint the picture a little bit um, for people that may have not been to any of your locations yet and give us an idea of what it looks like and the vibe. And then we can kind of go into like the menu and the concept and the culture. Yeah, sure. So if you walk into the, uh, we call it the OG, the original store, it's actually very basic, but the, uh, the theme of it was based off of uh, Day of the Dead. So there's a lot of black and white mural work all the way around, and it really tells a, a story when you look around the restaurant. So the first one, while it's exciting and, and, and looks great, it's evolved a little bit. The original is very much black and white. The first wall is all Day of the Dead, Day of the Dead with their families and, and all this great stuff. And then when you start going around the restaurant, we uh, start getting a little bit more into the street art aspect of uh, the artwork. So when you go into any condado, you know, you hope that uh, not just in one visit, you'll, you'll see everything. But every time you look into uh, the story and the paintings on the, uh, the walls, you'll always see something different. Oh, so we always cool. love to stick little things in there, uh, Easter eggs, I guess you'd call it, that uh, when you go in there, it's always something different. Uh, Does it change or you mean just because they're so, the art is so plentiful or deep or tells a story or do you change it? Yeah. No, we never change it, but uh, you'll look at a wall and you'll see like, you know, three skeletons, uh, you know, standing there cooking something on a pot. And then, you know, right behind it, you'll see a little gnome poking out, which you've <laughs> never seen before. So we like to put all this fun stuff in there. Oh, that's cool. That, uh, yeah. Wow. We call it our good luck charm. Every time we put a uh, gnome in every new restaurant that we do and we hide it <laughs> and uh, everybody kind of goes around and tries to find it. <laughs> That's so. kind of fun. Where's the gnome? <laughs> yeah, where's the gnome? Yep. I love it. And so you have the uniqueness of the actual vibe of the, when you look around, it's very unique mm -hmm. and very branded, if you will. And then, yep. and then the menu, I mean, it just seems like 
the, the A, the price points are super approachable. And then the ingredients are just, I mean, it's like maybe go through a little bit of like the uniqueness of the menu and how you kind of came up with these ideas. Yeah, it was, um, it was interesting. I, I wanted to make a place that I could afford uh, when I started this and go, you know, multiple times uh, a week, you know, not just once a month. To us, everything's all value driven. So we use the best uh, ingredients, the freshest ingredients that we can get to be able to give our customers a good price. Because I would rather you come in two or three times a week or, you know, four times a month than once a month because you can't afford it. So everything is based off of volume and that's how we we wanted to uh, design the menu. So when you come in, you get a couple of tacos, you get a margarita, uh, you get a couple of sides and you can get out of there usually cheaper than uh, McDonald's to be quite honest. So yeah, that's incredible because consider maintain the integrity of the ingredients. I would, I would think it would be a dance. <laughs> well, it is, but I will tell you, I mean, there's only so much you can fit in a taco. So we're selling volumes and volumes and volumes of stuff. So, you know, for instance, jackfruit's pretty expensive, but uh, jackfruit, the amount that will- say? I'm sorry, jack, Yeah, jackfruit, jackfruit okay. could be, you know, expensive, a marinated steak, but, you know, we don't overstuff it with protein. We're not giving you like the six or seven ounces that uh, Chipotle right. would, uh, would give you. So you can get a couple of tacos and- and be full. But yeah, we use the best ingredients we possibly can. And we beat up our vendors to give us the best <laughs> price that we possibly can get. And, yeah. you know, quite honestly, we, uh, we signed big contracts with them based off of our volumes and uh, we're able to get it down to a very affordable price for the customer. So was it always like that, Joe? I mean, from the beginning, I mean, now you have probably a little bit more leverage. Wow. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's... I mean, you know, in the beginning, you know, we didn't know we'd be this big. But uh, we uh, we still maintain the best price. I mean, my my food costs back in those days were a lot more than what it is now, <laughs> based off of my purchasing power. Right. But um, and sales always know, helps. Sales, sales makes everything yeah, better. <laughs> makes everything better. So now we can maintain um, that price point. We've only did a done a price increase one time in the entire time we've been open. Wow! And uh, that was so we could maintain the quality. So going up a quarter was something that had to be had to be done, and not many people knew because it's still such a great value yeah. to them. So and you have a really cool order. The Scantron is that is that your ordering system? Yeah, yeah. We call it our our chit C H I G. Yeah, our chit. A chit. Um, if you say that fast, it doesn't sound like chit. A chit. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great tool. You know, I, uh, I kind of took a cross between a place up in Cleveland and sushi places and a place in Chicago and, you know, put it together. And, and, uh, you know, I, I knew that this wave of build your own and being able to choose whatever you want, uh, when you go out and customizing is, is really kind of the future and, and it's here now. And, uh, people love that they can put chorizo on and get uh, cilantro onions and not have pickled reds. I just, I remember my 30 plus year career, some of the <laughs> chefs and owners that I'd work with and, you know, something as simple as, Hey, you know, I have an allergy to uh, onions. I can't have onions. And uh, I remember back in the day, the chef would go, well, that's what you get. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> go somewhere else. Right. And we're all like, what? <laughs> So you kind of so, flipped it around. So instead of like oh yeah. food modding, your food adding, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's exactly. Like, yeah. So when somebody comes in, there's um, it's almost like a like sometimes with the sushi rolls. Is it like the bubble? Like is it? How do I say? It? It's like a multiple choice test. Like with the bubbles, do you feel those? Is that how it is? <laughs> you know, everybody asks if it's a test, and it's funny. <laughs> That's how we kind of break the ice with new people that come in. But um, yeah, it's, so basically, you you sit there, and we have about uh, seven different. Uh, taco shells. So you'll pick your taco shell. Uh, then you'll pick your protein. We have about nine proteins. Uh, and then you pick all your fresh toppings that you want on there. And I think there's probably around 25 to 30. So you wow. put your lettuce, your jicama slaw, your red cabbage, if you want it. Uh, we have three different cheeses. So you can do your middle field smoked cheddar, uh, one of our corn salsas, and then you can put chipotle crema or you can put ghost pepper if you like something spicy. So yeah, there's just so many different things you can do. Wow. That's, um, that's yeah. like a lot. And then 
you do, I know you have some really cool things right now. Like an example, because you have your basic, you know, approachable taco that everybody's, you know, carnitas. And then you have some really cool, like jackfruit, as a jackfruit salsa or just some really neat current. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, oh yeah, we're, uh, we're very, uh, you know, I wouldn't say we're all vegan and vegetarian. Uh, that's not how we started out, but you know, with these tacos, you can either do something that's very healthy for you, or you can do something that's very bad for you. So you can put a ton of queso blanco all over your tacos <laughs> and it's all fatty, or you can go, uh, and do something vegetarian and lighter. So yeah, we, uh, in the last couple of years, I started adding, um, some fun stuff that really wasn't out there. Like the jackfruit is very vegan friendly, very vegetarian friendly, and it mimics whatever spices you put in there. So we made it mimic the texture of barbecue pulled pork <laughs> and uh, it tastes like barbecue pulled pork, uh, but for vegetarians. So, yeah. That's smart. That's awesome. So do you have somebody, well, at first I want to get back to when you, when you open your first Condado, I mean, what was that after your all experience up until that point? So you just kind of open the doors and were you like, hope cross my fingers, hope this, hope this forking works or like, what was your mindset? <laughs> well, my mindset was I'm all in or I will go back to bartending. So I took a chance and I did not know that this would happen, but I think anybody that, that starts their own business, especially in the restaurant business have to, has to understand that it could quite possibly fail. So you open the doors, you never compromise on quality how you treat your staff, your culture, and you hope for the best. And uh, so, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know if we'd fail or, <laughs> or we'd make it, but we, we made it. Yeah, you so. guys are crushing it. So we talked about menu. Let's talk, you, you talk about culture, which I know is super important to you, but let's talk a little bit about, about the, the branding. How did you come up with like the Dia de los Muertes? Does it have to do with the, the tequila? Did you go to Guadalajara on a trip and kind of was inspired? <laughs> No, I wish I was that uh, that worldly, but um, no, I I knew that I love the Day of the Dead theme, obviously, and uh, I knew I wanted to do something similar to that. I did a lot of research. I love Mexico and their culture and, and the culture of the Day of the Dead and what it stands for and the story behind it. So now I literally just said, this is what I like, and this is how we're going to do it. Now let's get a... Uh, a uh, great artist team in here, and and I'm going to give them a story of of how I feel about it, and hopefully they'll they'll put that on the walls. And uh, we did get very lucky, and uh, they did accomplish that, and they accomplish it at every restaurant since we do the artwork a little different. But the uh, the branding of of you know we always keep like five things that are the same: our tables, uh, our vinyl on our windows, um, our lampshades um you know so there's always four or five things that you always know you're walking into condado tacos That's then sweet. everything else we want it to be different so you feel like you can go into a different condado one day and you know get the same great food but be in a totally different atmosphere so and does condado mean county or barrio what is what's your well, uh, Barrio was my old oh, oh. <laughs> old company, which is fine, but it, it meant best tacos in the neighborhood. Neighborhood, that's Barrio. Right, yeah, Barrio. That was Barrio. Oh. And then Condado, I wanted to one-up myself. And so I said, uh, county, so best tacos in the county. Ah. So it was kind of a joke, but nobody else owned the name Condado. So we went out and trademarked it and did everything we needed to do. And it's a nice, clean name and we can go anywhere we want. So. When you think about, like right now, I was thinking about, I was just imagining like, okay, you know, you start, you come up with a concept and then you launch it, you know, and, and it's like, it takes off. And now you're like, how, is it six? How many restaurants do you have now? Yeah, we have six open uh, with four more slated for the end of the year. So 10. That's crazy, isn't it, John? I know. <laughs> it's, it's nuts. I did not think I'd be in, in this position um, oh four God. years ago, that's for sure. That's but awesome. uh, yeah, we're, we're going to have many of these. We're trying to take it national. And so far, it's been very well received. So you're so. in Columbus. So you're, you're in, mm -hmm. and then you're in Pittsburgh and in Minneapolis, right. you're looking at... Or? No, we're uh, we have four in Columbus right now, with another two on the way this year. Wow. We have one in Pittsburgh with the second one opening. 
uh, this year. And then we have one in Cincinnati and then one in Indy next month with the second one opening. And then we're going up to Cleveland at the end of the year. So awesome. we'll be in five different counties, I guess. Do you visit them all? I mean, how do you roll around? I mean, what's your, that's like a, when you, when you scale, when you grow. Well, I have a lot of good help. Yes. I will tell you that my COO, who is a day one guy who's owned his own place, came on and started bartending for me. And, and when we're just a little baby company, we, um, we, uh, I decided to make him my, uh, director of operations. And, uh, that has evolved into the COO role. So I have a lot of good people. I mean, we, as soon as we knew that we wanted to open eight of these a year and take them, we took on a lot of resources in our office, a CFO, we're hiring a president. I mean, wow. so much help in the office. And then for me, my job is basically I go around to these restaurants and make sure that the vision and the culture is still there. And, uh, you know, and then I report everything to, uh, you know, my COO and then he takes it out on his regionals and regionals talk to the general managers and, and make sure that we're accomplishing what we set out, which was to make an affordable, great product that tastes the same every single time you go into Condado Tacos. So wow. my role has changed significantly yeah. <laughs> over the years. I used to be the dishwasher, the line guy. I used to be there for 18 hours, uh, no exaggeration, for many, many years. And, uh, you know, but now uh, I have some really, really great people that do that stuff. So it's shifting from like the, the do, 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 you know, go, 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 mm-hmm. which you are obviously now, but it's in a different, it's in a different way. What's that, what's that been like to transition? Because I know that, you know, restaurants, you're in the, you're in it. You're always in mm-hmm. it, but sometimes you're like literally, you know, like you said, dishwashing or doing whatever you have to do. Right. So what's that like, that transition? It was it was really hard to uh, transition to that. And, uh, you know, it was hard for about a year. You know, it, it wasn't me trying to do everything anymore. I had to trust these guys to uh, do everything in the restaurant. So it was very hard. And now it's actually great that I can walk into a restaurant. I can be you know, the cheerleader and I can tell everybody what a great job they're doing. And that's really, you know, what the role has to uh, transition into. And then I just have to make sure that, you know, the vision of where we're going is always going to be there. So I like being more the creative now on the sidelines and, uh, yeah, but it was hard in the beginning for sure. When you, when you walk into all your different, does everybody know, I know it's a weird question, but do people, does everybody know you in your, their staff? Because you've got now you have six locations. It's weird because uh, most of them do. I mean, our employee retention is is huge for nice. most companies. Yeah. People love working for Condado and the culture and everything else. So yeah, but every once in a while there'll be a new face in there that I don't know, and uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's always I always get a kick out of it <laughs> when they don't know who I am and I walk into the kitchen and they try to stop me and. Or whatever, because they're being great employees. And right. I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm I'm the new uh, head aquatic engineer. I'm here for uh, one of the GMs. So I, I always find that humorous. But most people know who I am. Yeah, that's so funny. I know this is a strange question, but I'm now that we're a little bit through, and I kind of have an, a little idea. What was it like? You're from Chicago. What was it like at the like con dinner table, like growing up? Nowhere near as good as as this food. I can tell you that much. <laughs> My uh, my stepmother was not the greatest cook. My dad actually was a great cook. He would travel on business a lot and he would make me burritos and he would freeze them and put them in the freezer. So when he was gone for like three or four days, that's what I would live off of. So I had my Mexican food in my blood from when I was, I was young. But um, yeah, I mean, he was a good cook, but he wasn't uh, anything like what, what we're doing now. <laughs> I'd love to say... <laughs> Did you guys sit better, down for but... dinners? I mean, he, I know he's out of town. Oh, yeah, but yeah he's absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'd so, sit down and we'd have, you know, my grandparents over all the time. And, and uh, you know, we'd have family dinners at least once a month. I just find that, I feel like that's so interesting because there's a lot of people in the restaurant industry that do have, have when I, of, of a lot of the interviews that I, when I speak with people, there is a, a common thread, a theme of there's, there's something about coming around the table 
from childhood or that they're this con- kind of slightly consistent, you know, that joy of people coming together. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, it was always fun getting the whole family together at least once a month, sitting down, having dinner and, and, uh, and all that great stuff. But yeah. I know we talked about tacos, but I want to talk about, cause I know you're, you're a whiskey guy, but you're also a tequila guy. So oh, yeah. what's, <laughs> I love tequila is my favorite of all. Tequila is getting so much better in the last few years. It's not just about, uh, you know, that white silver tequila that you do a shot when you were in <laughs> college. It's, it's, uh, it's very much a lot of it is age one, three, five, seven years. And, uh, you know, they have great qualities and they're almost like sipping, uh, whiskeys now. I mean, the similarities in both of them are, are, uh, are amazing, but yeah, tequila is, is taking off. That's for sure. And you have some, you have a cool margarita, uh, almost build your own margarita or choices of margaritas as well. Is that- well, yeah, we do a lot of, uh, purees. So we always have our consistent house base for our, uh, regular margaritas and you know, they're the real kind of tart, you know, when you're at Mexico drinking and you get that really sharp tart taste. But we do, I think we do about 10 different purees, blood orange that we add in there, prickly pear, blueberry, mango, strawberry. We even have a banana. So we do some great stuff. And then we do a lot of other specialty marks, you know, our, our uh, Frida Kahlo, which is... Um, like a mojito, but with tequila. Mm-hmm. And then we do a skinny, skinny marg, which is basically no, no um, mix. It's just soda water and tequila and lime juice. So, um, but yeah, our, our margaritas are almost as popular as our, our tacos. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, that goes hand in hand. So what, are you uh, like well versed in tequilas? I would think so. I think if you're putting me on the spot, maybe I can name a few. But like, what's your, tell me, what, I, I'm what's, pretty well versed. Yeah. So, so when 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 you are choosing, because you have like X amount of shelf space, right? And you have like what fifty right. tequila choices. So, yeah, we try to do fifty tequila, fifty tequila, or fifty whiskey at a minimum. So, okay. So to get on the Condado shelf, you know, there probably is. Um, you know, it's limited. And so you, you, have, you have to be selective in a sense. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, I've noticed lately, just well, over the past few years, like the bottles, the bo- some of the mm-hmm. bottles just gotten crazy, like the, you know, the labels and the, the shapes. <laughs> what's your, what's your thought on, the, on that? <laughs> I, you know, I'm not a big fan. I mean, uh, here's the thing, right? The one thing that we never do at Condado is compromise quality. So we'll never put something, and I know you hear it like over and over from people, they all say it, but it's really true with us. We're not going to put something just because it has a big fancy bottle in a restaurant and expect people to buy it if it's not quality. So whatever we put on there, you know, we test and we make sure that we like the products before it goes on. But I, I mean, I've seen a lot of those bottles, uh, everywhere and, yeah. you know they're two hundred dollar bottles but they're you know ten dollar tequila in the bottles yeah. and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me what about mezcal is that something that is yeah we're starting to get into uh mezcals now i think we have you know six or seven different mezcals on each of the menu depending Do you like on mezcal? what region we're in like what's your personal what's your flavor profile i mean do you like me mezcal? personally no, I'm not a huge fan of mezcal. I do know people love it. To me, it's like drinking whiskey or drinking scotch. Scotch yes. to me is too peaty, yeah. you know, smoky. and um, smoky and peaty. And that's really what uh, mezcal is. And me personally, I'm not a big fan, but I I know that a lot of people are big fans and I have yeah. tested these and, you know, I, I want to sit there and drink it every night like a tequila, but it's getting big right now. And yeah. there's some really good ones out there. There are that I've, I've noticed. I'm a huge just regular uh, tequila, but but that's just my. But I know they're out there. It's everywhere. So we talked a little bit. I know as hu- this is huge here is culture, and this word culture of a restaurant and culture. It's it's almost um, I don't know uh, this this concept that I don't know how to bring it down so people kind of understand. So maybe you have a a good description of quote culture. Culture, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, culture is very important to me. Culture means, I guess, not compromising for whatever you're doing. So my whole thing was I wanted all my employees, including myself, to be comfortable. 
coming to work however you come to work. You have big gauges in your ears, if you have tattoos all over, if you have long hair, short hair, you're big, you're small, whatever it is, I wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody was the same when they came in at Condado. So, you know, some of the things that we do is, you know, we never have a uniform. We want you to come to work and feel good about coming to work. So however you dress is how you dress. And, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't get that in the beginning. Customers, they would, you know, not know that the server was their server and just think it was a random person coming up to the table. But, you know, (laughs) I stuck to it. And uh, it means a lot to our employees that you don't have to put on that traditional black shirt, black pants, black apron. The managers don't have to be in a suit. You know, the uh, managers don't have to be in slacks and a collared shirt. A lot of restaurants and old restaurants that are probably not doing as well anymore are that way. And it's hard to retain employees. It's hard to make employees happy. And what they don't understand is if your employees are happy, the customers are going to be happy. Um, When they're not happy, Customers are not going to be happy, and then you don't have any customers. So, you know, culture is embedded everywhere in Condado, you know, from, you know, what we pay to just our morals. We just, we don't throw people away. We give people many chances. Um, You know, I I always say the only person that uh, gets fired fires himself. Mm, You know, we can understand, uh, you know, not knowing how to do something over and over and over. We'll be there to teach you this is how you do it. But somebody that blatantly uh, doesn't do it because they don't like the company, they don't survive. But somebody that's trying, we've had a lot of success with keeping people because they keep trying and, and, and doing it. So, and because we give people so many chances. So, so far with the culture, it's more about, oh, you know, obviously having your, your from your standpoint, having employees, obviously they're coming first. You think about them first. Da- totally yep. Danny Meyer 101, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> and so, yep. so there's that concept. And then also mm-hmm. um, celebrating and the, the individual. And also it seems a lot about training. That's the point we got to. Meaning like you can tell somebody to clear the table, but they might not know you mean clear everything except the water glass. So that leap of logic. And then you get mad at them and or get, you know, oh, they, they suck, but they don't. They just, somebody just doesn't know. Yes, uh, nobody really truly sucks. I mean, there's a right, very small percentage right. of people. It's right. the it is this the training portion of showing them how to doing it and repeating it and showing them over and over and saying this is how I want something done. You know, people that don't put the effort in and they'll open a restaurant and they'll have five bullet points on their training sheet and that's the only time they train and then they wonder why people aren't doing what they asked because they haven't put any effort into physically showing them how to do their jobs, how you want them to do their jobs. You know, we want you to greet a table however you want. That's one of our great things with our culture. We're not like, hi, my name is Joe. I'll be your server today, blah, blah, blah. It's, hey, guys, how are you? What's up? How you doing? What can I get you? Have you been here before? So It gives it more of a natural, like entry, you know, a natural moment for, I think, for the servers so, so that it, they're, it's kind of free flow. Yeah, exactly. As long as they hit on the key points, have you been here before? Let me tell you how, how we do our menu, how you fill out your chit yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and explain our, you know, our processes that people want to know. How do you, how do you do your beef brisket? Oh, it's a, you know, it's a coffee and cocoa with root beer. And we do it for 14 hours overnight, raise it, you know, as long as they have those key things and are nice to the customers, we don't care how they do it. I mean, I swear all the time and I would go around and, you know, I've caught myself saying, that's a great fucking taco, isn't it? (laughs) And they, they really, people respond to it and they get, but that's my personality, you know, and, and I want everybody to have their own personality. So. Uh, yeah. There what about this is interesting though Joe too is there's there is I think a fine line of dance between having you know quote steps of service or having protocol having a standard and sticking to that while while also allowing for this like family vibe of the staff. Yeah, no, I agree. There's key points that you have to go over and 
certain SOPs that you want to make sure that you hit at the table. You know, ask them how their taco is after they take a couple of bites. But, you know, that all, all those things you can do and put into and teach somebody. But, you know, you just never want to stranglehold them with, you know, this is your line that you have to say. That makes you really not want to come to work, you know? Right. Nice. So as you grow, have you found some interesting stretch points of how to maintain the culture that we keep talking about this we've gotten to like the training and then the kind of individualness of the of the staff like how does how do you how do you negotiate that how do we keep that well yeah. we actually <laughs> non-negotiate we have, that <laughs> yeah non-negotiable it's a non-negotiable we have uh we call him an og he started day one uh with us at the original condado his name is chris mendoza and he's our director of culture so he will go around and spend a week in each restaurant and just make sure that, you know, he passes along that culture that he knows so well. I mean, this guy bought into our culture day one. I shit you not. And yeah, it just, he loves, he eats, he breathes Condado. He gets it. Love he it. loves the company. He loves the people that work for the company. He loves his staff. He thinks just like me. You know, nobody's a throwaway. Let's work with them. Let's get them done. I mean, he just has that right approach. And, uh, you know, he uh, he goes around and he'll spend a week in each store and just keep doing it round and round and round and round. And every time he sees something that uh, doesn't quite fit our culture, you know, he'll put it, you know, in his report and then he'll sit down with the GM and he'll say, well, this is what I see. And, you know, we're not treating this person well. And, why are you guys all in uniforms now? You, that's not our policy. And, uh, you know, so it's, uh, it's something that we're very conscious of and we wanted to get ahead of it before we got too big. So that's smart. we no. went ahead and made Mr. Mendoza a <laughs> big shot, our director of culture, which he loves that title. <laughs> Is there what director of culture? Is there, is there another, I've never really noted that in any other org chart. Is that something that's yeah. unique? I think that's unique for us. Yeah. Unique. Yes. I mean, some people call it the uh, the people person. I've seen that on a few org charts. Uh, it's pretty rare, though, in the restaurant business. But again, because our culture is, means so much to us, we wanted to make sure it's now that I don't have all the time to spend in the stores anymore that uh, we have somebody like Chris who gets us and uh, goes around and does that. So, yeah, hopefully... Uh, Hopefully I'm like Danny Meyer Jr. Yeah, and I invented so. something without uh, without him. It's kind of like the current, yeah. I just got chills because I thought that, I feel like that's like a really huge key that you were proactive on, that you were kind of one step ahead on, like knowing that you're growing and shit. Where's, where could this fall apart, you know, maybe from experience or from going into restaurants? And I think that like, that's like a, a great brace, you know, like this is how we're we're staying ahead of it instead of hindsight. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of people do it. I know Danny Myers does it, and I take a lot of inspiration from him. In and Out Burger, they're very true to their culture. I don't know if they have a director of culture, but I mean, In and Out Burger I, I, is a great company to me. They pay extremely well, they don't compromise with their culture, they don't compromise with their quality. I think it was three days ago, they shut down every store in uh, Texas because their buns weren't up to uh <laughs> I to, to par so they shut them all down no way nobody does it. oh yeah nobody does that anymore oh we God. do that if something's wrong i mean in the beginning especially wow. it was not going well and ticket times were an hour and a half and i think i shut down the restaurant four or five times and just everybody in there just got free dinner wow. you know and uh instead of giving them a crappy product and crappy service it's just like yeah, this is on us. That's a huge key to success, I think. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's doing the right thing. It's like, how, right? It's just, and it seems like it shouldn't be like when you sit back and go, well, it shouldn't be that hard to like treat your staff well or to maybe if something's, you know, not up to quality to like take care of it. But like, it seems like simple but idea, but they're usually, simple. <laughs> I, I, I will say that execution uh, <laughs> execution is a big thing, but yeah, a lot of people don't take those chances and shut it down because it's not what you're trying to present there. I just feel like it's so much more damaged to, if you don't, 
do something like that. And then you just pissed off a hundred people that are in your dining room that are never going to come back. And you know, that old saying, one person tells three people and I'm a restaurant guy and I have a lot of sympathy for other restaurant guys. But if I have a horrible experience, a blatantly horrible experience that was given to me, uh, you know, I will tell three of my friends I know. and those three friends will tell other people. And that's just, so you have to take chances like that. And it's faster now too, with social media and everything. Oh yeah, it's for like sure. Wildfire. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. So any other parts of the, of culture, like if some of you were to give advice to somebody, say somebody's like, I'm going to open up a restaurant, you know, they just want to open up one, maybe not a taco joint, but something, you know, that they're passionate right. about. What would be What's the advice? Like, do they write, write a list of like, what are, what they want or expect? Like, how do you start that process? I think so. I think you have to go into it saying that this is my vision because it's all about the vision, right? And when people would say that, I would always be like, what what do you mean vision? This is just what I want. But it really does come down to the vision. I want to serve great food at this price without serving crappy product. Uh, I want to treat my staff well so they're happy and they come to work. I want to pay them a lot of money so they're happy. So in turn, I can make a lot of money and, and uh, you know, and you have to live by that. So, you know, if you open up and you say, hey, I'm going to have the best hot dog place, which I did open and I failed. <laughs> and uh, But I stuck to my guns and I said, this is just a hot dog place. This is what it's going to be, hot dogs. But uh, you just can't compromise and say, okay, now I'm doing chicken patties and then I'm going to do burritos. And so, you know, when I did this, it was, I want to do one thing extremely well, tacos. I have 35 items I need to focus on and that's it. Um, And I'm going to do it consistent and well. And that's what I would advise somebody else. Put it down, write it down on paper and stick to it. Just, I'm just curious about the, because this is like a, interesting to me. Like, so mm-hmm. with the hot, say hot dog, say you have a hot dog yep. versus tacos. So what is it? Okay. Do things have to do with uh, the timing, the location, just the market? I mean, I know there's, that's like. I will there. tell you that was, that was the market. I went into a suburb. I never should have done it, but uh, it was like the deal of a lifetime go into this building. And, you know, it was a building that was pushed back. The product itself was a really good product. Was like everything I try to do, I try to make the best product. But um, yeah, it was certainly location was the big, big bust in a in a suburb pushed back. It was actually on top of a uh, car repair place. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, right? <laughs> it, it was very interesting. But yeah, a lot of it has to do with uh, location. Okay. That's why I think it, it failed. When you think back, Joe, were you thinking like, was there like a, a gut feeling of something that was like saying, no, don't do this? Or was it, is, is there, was there anything instinctual that you know the difference of now to then? Oh yeah. I'll, I'll never go in a location that I don't feel good about. I'm like, uh, uh, I'm like a predator. I'll go to a location. I'll spend a lot of time there before I make a decision. I'm obsessive about it. I will stand out uh, in, <laughs> like in that your neighborhood. Car scoping out, like drinking coffee oh, all yeah. night long. Like you're well, I look like at the agent. people and I go, oh, families. Okay, I like that. And then I'll see like two or three more and I'm like, okay, that's good. And then I'll see a bunch of hipsters and I'm like, oh, that's good. Yeah. And then I'll see another demographic that I like and I'm like, oh, that's good. <laughs> and then I'll do it over and over and over, literally for like a month. And then I'll do it. The The whiskey dog thing that, failed. Uh, somebody just offered me that spot and I said, yep, I'll do it. So I, I shouldn't have, but now I'm very methodical about our locations and I spend a lot of time making sure that they're, they're the right locations for us. Nice. So there is a process. There is a, there is a, so this is like the, uh, I think people, when they look at successes of restaurants or things, it's, it, it seems like, oh, it just happens, but there is a background story to it. There is lessons that have been learned. And there's also methodology methodology going forward. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, but I always think that I think the after I do it, I'm all excited. And then I think, oh, this is gonna fail. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. But yeah, there's a lot of thought put into it. We took a we take a little bit of risk, you know, where when we open a spot, we're not in the premier locations. 
we're kind of off of that location, but we're close enough to that premier location. I say if it's within two blocks of that premier location, go ahead and do it. But, you know, anything further than that, I'll never, usually never touch. Is, is things based now, I know there's like Ubers and Lyfts and everything, are things as based off of parking as they have been in the past? Or is it still? Actually, we never have parking. Our, our parking situation for all our restaurants are horrible. So it's, that's a theme. <laughs> yeah. It's consistent. Yeah, I mean, it, nobody has good parking. Right. Um, but Lyfts, Ubers, you know, what people want to do is, yes, they'll come and find you if you're, you know, a great product but they won't come and find you that often unless you're in a place where there's other restaurants and it's vibrant and, you know, people want uh, to be in an area like that. They don't want to go into, you know, a neighborhood that you're the only thing there. Right. They'll still come visit you once a month, but they won't come visit you four or five times a month. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. So one last thing I want to talk about is mentors. I know that we talked a little bit about Danny Meyer. Um, I want to know if you have any other mentors or I know that in and out the business model you mentioned obviously probably is a, a model, um, other ones that you might want to add and also how, how you provide mentorship or how do you have your, um, empower your managers to be the mentors? Yeah. I mean, my personal mentor besides all these big companies was a guy named Mark LaGrange and he, uh, right before I opened Condado, I worked for him and he was a great guy. He empowered me to do whatever I wanted with his place, take ownership of his bar, and he would pay me a percentage of the sales if I got sales up. Oh, that's nice. That's motivational. And yeah. That's very motivational. He's like, okay, I want to do music once a week. And he had already been there for 25 years. It's called uh, Edison's in uh, Tremont. But uh, yeah, he's like, hey, if you can increase sales, I'm not going to ever question you. You know, don't do anything stupid. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to do this, go ahead and do it. I'm going to come check on you. You know, I'll give you support when you need support. But he's like, what it comes down to is if you can't take ownership of my bar, my restaurant, then you're not the guy for me. So I'm going to reward you. If you can get sales up through employee retention and doing cool things that you want to do, like trivia or whatever you want to do, then um, I'm going to reward you. So I got my base salary. I think I bartended a couple days and, uh, and then I got uh, my percentage of sales, which was, I think, 5%. Wow. And it was great. That's it nice. was all the money in the world to me. I made like eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, but what we do with our GMs is we also empower them. So we give them big salaries. Everything from the COO to our GMs, we, we give them big salaries. Um, we give them attainable bonuses that, uh, Wait, you know, did you we say base attainable? Every... Oh, yes, extremely <laughs> okay. attainable. Because, okay. you know, sometimes in restaurants, you're like, what was that matrix bonus not attainable? <laughs> no, yeah, no, we, um, we basically pay an $80,000 base and then a $50,000 bonus a year. Oh, sweet. And, uh, the bonus is based all off of prime costs. So, I mean, you keep your food costs under 25, you keep your uh, labor under 30, and you keep your uh, liquor under 22, and you'll get your uh, bonus every quarter. Nice. So we don't do it yearly, we do it quarterly. And uh, so far, everybody has made their bonus because they're super motivated. It gives me the cash to uh, keep opening these. And I truly want everybody in the company to make a lot of money. I mean, if they're making me a lot of money, they should be able to make a lot of money. And that's part of our culture. We want them to be happy, not have to worry about your bills, not have to, you know, worry about when you're, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, we do some great stuff. We have a 401k coming. We match it by 4%. I mean, that's just wow, not done in the no, restaurant that's business. Awesome. So that's huge. And I then I mentor. Yeah, you want to come to I work? Come work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? I, I will say that um, as far as mentoring, I'm always there to mentor somebody. I write, you know, these memos and and these pages for the GMs that you know is basically what do I see? And I call it what does Joe Con see? And I I go through everything when I'm in a restaurant. This is what I look like. Are your are your chips underdone? Are your hard shells underdone? Are your flower shells not warmed? Are your 
white mesa shells, uh, you know, under warmed proteins? Are, are you stirring them? You know, are you wearing your gloves? Are you uh, treating people right? Do people have a big smile on their face? You know, all that kind of stuff. And I try to teach them not to be me, but to see what I see, because I think that's part of our success is how we treat people in our culture. So I love that. I do love that. And then you probably didn't realize all the things you saw, you know, that were normal for you, like light bulb, you know, always look up the light bulbs or put the light, lights on before it gets dark. Cause now, you know, you can't change the light bulb in the middle of the service, you know, things like that. Or, you know, if something's a little bit out of place. I remember one of my owners, I was managing restaurants. I used to manage restaurants. And one of the owners, when I first started managing, and I remember he was so great and he did, wasn't being a jerk doing this, but he'd be like, he would do these little games because I was like, really, into, like, that's how you can relate to me. I'll, I'll play a game, like pull something off of the shelf and and t- and then I have to tell you what what's missing or, you know, something like that. But he would be like, look, look up. And I'm like, yeah. And he, he's like, do you, what do you see? And I'm like, I couldn't find it. And it was because one light bulb was perfectly out and it was so out that it like blended, but where the, the angle that I was standing. So he, oh, oh, so really? it, yeah, it was the angle I was standing when I looked up. So it was kind of like, cause the, you know, the light shone in the back from the kitchen. So it's like always, so I was learning, it's like, always look up, always look around, change your perspective, sit down where the guests are, look around. I mean, all these things that, you know, you learn along the way and, it's helpful when somebody can communicate that to the other without it being mean or condescending and, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. A big, a big help with this is our, uh, uh, COO, Johnny, another OG, you know, he's a great mentor to these guys as well. He's like, I want you to take 15 minutes a week, sit in a different location in the restaurant and pretend you're a customer. Like, what do you see? Are they doing their job? Is it clean? I mean, yeah, all this dust stuff. Balls and, that you, not saying yours does, but at some restaurants, because they don't see it. Cause oh, not we have dust them. balls. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but, you know, that's that's from GMs not sitting down and saying, hey, this is my perspective. Okay. Well, crap. Yeah. I forgot to tell the cleaning crew to do the high dusting. Oh, okay. You know, because when you're in your building every single day, you just live with what you have. So you're not looking around and, and doing all this. So. You have your blinders on for sure. Yeah. Gosh, Joey, I'm so, uh, I'm so, I'm, I'm going to definitely, when I come to that part of the country, check out your uh, restaurants. And I have to tell you, I, I told you before when we, we did, we actually did just first meet, but we met eye to eye on Skype for a moment. And I was telling you about Cody, who is my uh, awesome uh, team editor and uh, production guy. And I was like, oh, have you been to Condado? He's like, because he lives in Columbus. He's like, um, yeah, we go all the time, which was That's awesome. Yeah. And that they had just been there on Saturday and his his wife absolutely loves uh, Condado tacos. So I thought that oh, was kind of cool. That's great. Yeah. If you're ever, ever down here, I'll buy you a tequila. Oh, yes. How about that? Please. Yeah. yeah. And if you come over this way to um, the LA Santa Monica area, we have to go out for a tequila. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. Joe, thank you so much. It was awesome, informative. And um, I'm going to say, raise my glass again and close it out with a cheers to Condado Tacos and wait, the Taco Touchers. <laughs> Taco, Condado Taco Touchers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoyed listening to that episode. And again, Please rate and review if you did like this podcast episode or any of the other ones. Please go to iTunes, download, rate, review. I appreciate that very much. Just forking around podcasts. And again, I am Debbie Salzberg. My handle on Instagram is at forking podcast. My website is just forking around.net. And I am so excited to have you on board here with me on the Just Forking Around podcast, and I look forward to seeing you on the next show.